Okay, folks, at the end of the last video, I said that we would look at impulse waves here, but I've decided to include diagonals as well because they're both motive waves and the rules are very similar. Now, we'll look at the structure and examine the rules which distinguish one from another, and then we'll take a look at Elliot's guidelines for motive waves in a separate video. Now, let's start with this impulse wave. Now, as we saw earlier, the basic impulse has five waves three of which are motive, which are one, three and five, and two are corrective, two and four. There we have it. Now, here we have Elliot's rules for an impulse. And remember, these rules can never be broken or else we're not looking at an impulse. So for the sake of simplicity, we're only going to look at these in one direction. In other words, in the, this is a bull market, as it were, or a, a bull trend. Um, but exactly the same rules apply if you're looking at this upside down, if you're, if you're looking at a bear market. But as I say, for simplicity, we'll stick to one direction. So our first rule we have here is wave two can never extend below the start of wave one. So here we have wave one coming up. Now, at this point, this would be developing and then price starts to come down. Now, if price comes down, oops, that's locked. If price comes down below the start of wave one, then we're not looking at an impulse, guys. This is something else. This is potentially a corrective wave or it might be the start of a uh, an impulse in the, the opposite direction, but it's certainly not the start of a bull impulse. So rule one is that cannot trace down there. It can come down quite low. It can be anywhere within the bounds of our first wave. Okay, so that's the first rule. The second rule, wave three is often the longest wave and the rule, it's never the shortest wave. So wave three could never look like that. That's not an impulse wave because in this case, wave three is the shortest. It could look like that where it's the longest or it could look Oops, it could look like that, where it's the middle, you know, that's the longest, this is the next longest, and the fifth wave is the, the shortest, but it can never be the shortest. And our third and final um, rule is that four, wave four, can never come down into wave one, the price area of wave one. In other words, we can never have a situation that looks like that. It can come down close. Let's draw a line in there to have a look at what we're talking about. That's the top of wave one. It can come down close to it, but it can never break it. If it breaks it, it's not an impulse. And that's our three rules for Elliot's uh, impulse wave. So that's the basic rules, but let's just have a look at what we have here. If we had a situation where we had impulse wave come up one, with two to there, that all looks grand. And then this next one comes up and it looks like a three wave, but before it gets becomes longer than one, it turns. And the four wave comes back into the area of one. So we've broken two rules there, guys. So how would we go about labeling that? It certainly isn't an impulse wave. But if we look over here, we can see it like this. Wave one comes up, we get our first one, which we think is two, we've labeled over here as two. We get our next one up, which we think initially is three. But when it retraces, now we've got to think completely differently. What is this that we're dealing with here? But if we look at it like this, and remember we haven't covered corrections yet, but when we co cover corrections, we'll find one of the types of correction is a thing called expanded flat. And this is an expanded flat. You don't need to worry too much about it at the moment. We're just using it to explain how we develop our idea, how our analysis, our interpretation has to be dynamic. In other words, we don't just see it from the off. As things progress, as things develop, 
we say, oh my goodness, this can't be an impulse. What is it? And once it's developed a little bit more, we can say, oh, I can see now what it is. That's the point where you start to get yourself in the position where you say, I can see what it is. So there's a high probability that it's going to do a certain thing next. And that's where we start to look for a trade. So in this situation, we had our one. We had an expanded flat, which gives us our two. Remember, two is a correction of some sort. And then we have our three. So at this point, we might be looking for a trade, guys. Three finishes, comes back down. Four is well above the end of one. So it meets all the rules. And then we have our five. So that's, that's maybe a bit too complicated for this level. But it's just giving you a little bit of insight into how we interpret what's happening and how Elliot's rules can help us make our decisions as we go along. Okay, let's move on to diagonals. Okay, so here we have a di diagonal, an Elliot wave diagonal. And you can see that it still looks very similar to an impulse, but there are some very, very subtle differences. So let's run through the rules. Wave 2 can never extend below the start of wave 1. That's exactly the same as in our impulse. That cannot come down below here, the start of wave 1. Okay, so everything's grand up to now. Wave 3 is often the longest wave and never the shortest. That's exactly the same as the rules for an impulse. In other words, this is often the longest, but it can never be the shortest. Okay, so everything's hunky-dory, everything's the same. And this is where a diagonal starts to look different. Wave 4 often overlaps wave 1. Do you remember in the impulse, wave 4 could never overlap into wave 1. In a diagonal, wave 4 often overlaps into wave 1. So that's impulse, that's a diagonal. There's the line at the top of wave 1, and it's encroached into it, but it's still a mode of wave it's still moving in a upward direction in this situation or a downward direction if we were looking at a, at a bear trend. And that's your two mode of waves, guys, diagonals and impulses and the variation. There, there are some other variations, but for now, the variations are that. If it's there, it's an impulse. If it's there, it's a diagonal. And everything else is the same except the wave structure but we'll look at that later on the other thing that's interesting about diagonals is their position where you'll find them so let's have a look at the, the different positions where we'll find a diagonal our first position is what we call a leading diagonal and that's where we have an impulse wave coming up and the start of it is a diagonal and not an impulse do you remember when we were looking at an impulse earlier in the first video we said that each wave was fractal and it was made up of a smaller version of itself. Well, here we have ordinarily this would be an impulse wave. Ordinarily, this wave one would be an impulse wave, which would look something like that. But sometimes we get a leading diagonal where four overlaps into one. When we get a completion of one, then we get two, three, four as normal. So that's the first position is a leading diagonal. Now there are some variations yet again to this which we'll speak about when we get on to guidelines and we get a bit more into it and start to um, look at the variations. But for now we're looking at the sim simplicity of it. We're looking at the rules and I just you need to know this stuff first guys before we start to get you know more complex. The next situation we find is what we call a ending diagonal. In other words, it's in wave five position rather than wave one. So we have a normal wave coming up, a normal impulse coming up, one, two, three, four. And then we get a diagonal where the fourth wave overlaps into the first wave. And that completes. When it completes, then we have our fifth wave. Now one of the the guidelines to a fifth wave diagonal, an ending diagonal, is that it often indicates a sharp 
corrective move to come. But yet again, we'll talk about things like that later on. Our next position, and now that's that's the two positions that we find a diagonal in an impulse. But you can also find them in corrective waves. So our third position for a diagonal is in a corrective zigzag. And here we have a what we call a zigzag. And we'll talk about corrective waves later, guys. But just for now, this is what we call a zigzag. And the zigzag is an A, B, C. That's our zigzag. Looks like this. A, B, C. Which is a corrective wave, which we've been calling in blue. So that's the whole wave. And if we include the subwaves. Take that out. If we include the subwaves. We can find a diagonal in this A position. This is A, B, C. A can be a diagonal. Then we have a wave B and C can also be a diagonal. Very, very rarely, guys, that you'll get this set up where you have a diagonal a B wave and then another diagonal. But I'm just using this to show you that you can get them in this position and you can get them in that position. Just to complete our diagonal position, here's our final one. This is what you call a flat correction. Yet again, we'll look at corrections in a moment, but this one is called a flat. And ordinarily, it looks something like this, although there are variations to it, guys. We have an A wave coming down, a B wave comes up like that, and with a C wave like that. And that's our correction, which would come after the top of our impulse. So what we have in this situation, we have our A wave, which is a normal wave, with our B wave, which is a normal wave, and in our C position, we can get a diagonal. Okay, just to summarize our diagonal wave positions, it's wave one of a motive wave, which is called a leading diagonal, wave five of a motive wave, which is called an ending diagonal, wave A of a zigzag correction, wave C of a zigzag correction, and the final one is wave C of a flat correction. And that is the position where you'll find diagonal waves. Okay guys, that'll do for this video. We don't want to give you too much information all at once. Because remember, you have to learn this before we can give you another layer. And in the next one, we will go over all of those corrections that we've mentioned here in a lot more detail. And we'll give you Elliot's rules for them. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. Bye for now.